Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Unwrapped Podcast. I'm your host, Emily Vogel. And of course, we have your other host, Andy Ortiz. How are we today, Andy? Listen, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm coming into today a little bit traumatized. And I'm so sorry to get us just derailed so early, but I really, I need to talk to someone about this. I just watched a video literally before we signed on to start recording this. It was a video from the Drew Barrymore show. They were doing their like weird food combo tasting that they do. And one of the things they had to try was mac and cheese and applesauce. And I'm just like- Together? To my goal. Yeah. And like to my core, I'm so offended by this idea. So I'm I'm not great right this minute. How are you, Emily? <laughs> Well, now I'm like confused. Like I'm, yeah, I yeah, feel weird I now. Go, I'm going down. I'm taking everybody down with yeah, me. Yeah, things are pulling me down. I, I, it's making me feel some type of way. Oh my, is that a Listen. thing that people do? I haven't heard of that before. Dude, I get. I don't. I you can't convince me that it's something that people actually do. But like, I I don't know. I guess it's come up enough that they felt that they need to try it. If you have tried it, if you're watching us, if you're listening and you've tried it, first of all, I don't trust your taste in food. But like. Tell me why. Tell me when this became a thing. I don't know. This was not, I promise this was not how I wanted to start this conversation, but it was gonna, it was gonna sit in my brain and just kind of like resonate and itch there. So I needed to just start us off there. Listen, if I start us off on a weird note, it can only get better, right? There's only up from here, but actually that was kind of a nice distraction because there's just so much going on right now. Anyways, this week we have the writer strike, the the Met Gala. Andy, what are you hearing? Um, from from the front lines of the picket, have you heard anything? <laughs> what celebs are you seeing? What what celebs? What writers? Who are you? Who are you seeing out there? A little part of me thought you were asking me, "What am I hearing from the front lines of the Met Gala?" And I was like, "Girl, I don't have those kind of connections. I'm not hearing anything. I'm hearing how great it was. I'm seeing the fashion posts on Instagram. So certainly nothing from the front lines of the Met Gala. From the front line of the writer strike, though." It's been fascinating to watch, man. I'm really, really interested to see just how this one plays out. It is the first strike, or rather the first Writers Guild strike, and I believe about 15 years. Last one was 07, 08, so like Mm -hmm. I can't do fast math like that. 15 years since it ended, I guess. Um, And it's just, it's really, really fascinating to watch. If you are in the know about this and you want to know more or if you know nothing about the writer's strike we have a ton of coverage going on over at the rap.com and there's just like a whole tab for it and you can kind of get up to speed on what they're asking for and what they're really working for and it's just it's honestly it's fascinating and i know that's so like that's such a broad way to categorize it but there's just there's so many like moving pieces to it so we've got some really great coverage i would encourage everyone to to check it out especially if you weren't like because i know for us 2007 2008 we probably weren't like paying close attention at that time it was what eighth grade yeah ended eighth grade in 2008 and so we wouldn't have like we wouldn't have known at the time what all of that meant. So seeing it now, it's just it's illuminating. It really is. Right. And I think in a, we have a bunch of different types of coverage. So depending on kind of how you like to absorb your content, we, you know, we're out there on the front lines interviewing writers who are striking. We just hosted a panel um, where we can hear from the writers directly. And then, of course, you know, any other editorial um, stuff as well. Um, but yeah, on a, on a little less, you know, sad or. I don't know. No, we um the Met Gala also happened, which was Met Gala did happen. On another note, and Guys, a lot we're of- not we're really not on our transition game today. There's a lot going on, so we're just gonna go from topic just- to topic, and chaos- we're gonna make it work. <laughs> always chaos is always. That's how we that's how we do it over here. But the Met Gala, we had a lot of women from rap women events from our podcast who were strutting their stuff. Priyanka Chopra, Jonas, who was on last week, rocked it on the red carpet. Um, she looked amazing. We've had so many other Stephanie Shu like. It was just so like, you. Oh. Yep. She was at Power Women Summit on a panel that I moderated, which like I feel like I feel so cool just being able to say that. But I listen, she rocked like a tie on on her dress. Like it's hard mm-hmm. to explain to go on Instagram and check out her. Her dress was stunning. And I love when a woman can pull off a tie. I used to love like wearing skinny ties, but I could never pull them off. That was like a trend for a little bit. And I think I'm gonna blame Gossip Girl for that one. Don't know why. I just have like distinct memories of Blake Lively making a tie fashion i don't know i could be i could be super wrong but yeah no the fashion is insane but it was interesting to me it wasn't like insane insane minus jared leto he showed up in just like a whole cat mascot costume that was insane respect 
but that was insane. Um, but the rest, it wasn't like a big, like crazy theme this year. So it was really cool. I was a little underwhelmed. Like everyone looked stunning and gorgeous, but I was hoping for more of those crazy costumes. Um, and then, of course, there was a lot of Bet Blackosh as well. Uh, Jamila Jamil, who's obviously been on the podcast, has spoken at our events, and so many other celebrities as well didn't attend. Um, because of Carl Lagerfeld's reputation and he was the one who was really being honored at this year's event um you know he he's in the past made comments that um you know could have be could contrived as fat phobic or racist and things like that so interesting to see that this was definitely a controversial controversial theme this year and we also have a couple upcoming guests for rap women who also were on the carpet so stick stay tuned to hear what those are who those people are um and also you know speaking of upcoming guests and new things that are happening on unwrapped um all of our episodes are now fully recorded via video so you can watch them all as well um and then be sure obviously to check out any additional clips on uh our instagram at rap women and on twitter at the rap women andy and i are also always posting um other backgrounds behind the scenes bits uh, on our Instagrams and on TikTok. I'm at Emily Vogel, please. And Andy, I'll toss uh, it. On Instagram, I'm at really underscore Andy. And on literally everything else, it's just at really Andy. So again, Instagram Andy, I'm still, I remain angry with you. <laughs> um, Yeah, but b- be sure to, you know, drop us your comments. Let us know if you tried uh, mac and cheese and applesauce. We want to hear it all. Um, I'm just, I'm so bothered by it, but also, but in that realm, not in the realm of discussing food combinations in the realm of telling us what you think. uh, We got a lot of love for our our guest last week. We spoke to Priyanka Chopra, who is in Citadel on Prime Video now. And we do, we see these comments, we send them to each other and we're like, look, they like us. They really like us. So uh, it it does, it does make our day. Especially too, I've, it's been really fun to see everyone's comments around um, Priyanka's, around the discussion involving freezing her eggs. And a lot of people have come out and shared their stories and their research and things like that, which is always like really uh, heartwarming, especially for someone like me who is considering freezing their eggs and wants to learn more information. Um, so please, again, feel free to share your comments. And this episode, we do have a super fun guest and we hope there's going to be a lot that you guys enjoy about it and have to yeah. say about it. Uh, so Andy, want to tell them who we have today? Oh, I, you know that I do. Today, we are talking to the one, the only, only, good Lord, I'm just, words, words are hard today. The one, the only, there is an L in that word, Sabrina Impatitori from the White Lotus. She also joined us at the Power Women Summit and just being in the same room with her with a bunch of other women was incredible. So we were like, let's, let's get her in for like a whole conversation and just bother her for however long we can. Um, We didn't bother her at all. I promise. It is a wonderful conversation. She is so generous with her time, generous with her insights. It's just, she's great. So let's get into it. Let's roll it. Sabrina, hello. Welcome to Unwrapped. Thank you for joining us today. How are you? Genuinely, how are you doing today? Oh my God. How are you? Adora, first of all, uh, thank you for having me here. Hello to everybody. And um, how are you? Um, How are you? I am happy. I think I'm happy in this moment. (laughs) It's a very, very special moment. It's very unique. I'm living a dream. So I'm very happy. I'm thrilled. I'm frightened. Uh, It's a mixture of feelings. Uh, It's uh, uh, a moment that for sure I will never forget. And uh, we'll see. I'm living this moment very, very strongly with all of myself. Good. And it sounds like it's mostly good emotions. As long as it's mostly happy, as long as happy is like the top feeling, then you're doing just fine. So, you know, happiness must be recognized because Mm -hmm. sometimes we are living in happy moments, but we don't really recognize it. It's very important to be able to see when, when, for, for example, when you're not, when you're not suffering already to me, when I'm not in pain, it's already a happy moment. And uh, so imagine now that there is joy. So now it's really one of the happiest moments in my life. That is so beautiful and great to hear. And we are so happy to have you back because obviously uh, you joined us at the Power Women Summit back in December. And uh, we are happy to continue the conversation here about everything you've been up to, chat more about White Lotus. Uh, But first things first, 
I did want to talk about this because you recently hung out with Murray Bartlett, who plays the White Lotus manager in season one. Can you please tell me like everything that went down? What did y'all talk about? T- tell me everything. Oh my God. I hope uh, I am not going to cry because this man broke my heart. This man. Oh my God. Allora. Um, remembering that I was haunted by him because he was the icon of the first season. He's a genius. His character became really a legendary character. So for five weeks, I didn't sleep while we were shooting. I always, I was always thinking about him, how how could I not make people regret him? It was mission impossible. So uh, he really was present in my life so much before meeting him. That girl, what happened is that this man with a huge heart wrote me on Instagram. He wrote me and his message was starting like, sorry for sorry for something like for, sorry for interrupt you or sorry if i'm reaching you out but i really would like to tell you how much i loved you and how much i loved your work so can you imagine when i read this message literally i i, I exploded crying because it was very very moving it was incredible it was like I don't know. Uh, um, so uh, of course I answered to him, and so so for yeah, for a few days we were writing to each other, and that was very very sweet. But I didn't didn't know when I when it would happen that I could meet him. And then I went to this party the night before a party, and no one told me that he was there. <laughs> And I saw him and I ran, ran to him and I, I hugged him tight and we were, and she was so sweet. Well, I think that this man, he's very unique. He's not only a great artist, he's a great heart. He has a real heart. And when I meet an artist that I love, that is so human, I feel really happy, Echo. It's it's a real deep feeling. And I hope there's video of that somewhere. I, I want the video of you like running at Murray Bartlett full speed. Like Murray! Like a rom-com <laughs> slow motion. I have yeah, goosebumps like a, after like a hearing that story. Supercut. That's that's what I want to see. But oh, oh. I'm glad I'm glad that, you, that it happened. I'm glad that you were able to meet him. Um, but as you know, you mentioned you you finally got to meet at a party. Every time I'm on Instagram, you are at another party a star-studded event you are killing it who is the craziest celebrity that you've met who watches white lotus it's hard to tell because in these days this oscars week was was really crazy and i also wondered am i able to keep this rhythm because dear this rhythm it's it's really really high level of stress like i was very stressed of course i was having fun you feel also drained and having all those parties in a row it was like really really overwhelming and crazy so i met so many stars it looked like i was dreaming i mean stars i i i I follow since i was a child so i can't really tell you who was the craziest star watching White Lotus. I remember me uh, talking to, like, for example, an actress that I really love is Laura Dern. I really love Laura Dern since since uh, uh, Wild at Heart. Um, and uh, so I met her and she was so happy to meet me and she loved my work. And I couldn't believe that because I really love her deeply, dearly. She's an incredible actress, uh, but um, I've been meeting so many people. I don't know. Oh, it's it's hard to tell. 
Well, Elton John, for example, when I met Elton John, Elton John, he wanted to meet me. Someone came and said, Sir Elton John would like to meet you. I said, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I said, they took me in front of him. He was sitting, he was eating. So I thought, I thought, oh my God, this is the worst moment ever to meet him. He's literally having a fantastic mouthful and me, I'm coming in this circle and she turned and he stood up and he hugged me like this. And she kept this hug so long that I couldn't believe it. That was. <laughs> Oh, Papa Mia, I was like a child. And I, I would simply disintegrate it. Like, I, if, if, I, if Elton John, that's out of the realm of possibility in my life. But like, if Laura Dern, if, like, if Laura Dern wanted to meet me or told me that she liked my work, or even like, even if Sabrina, at one point, if you ever told me, like, oh, Andy, I love what you do, I would simply just like fall to the ground and just need like an hour to recover because that. That is a wild life you are living, but that's the joy. That's the happiness that we need to recognize that it's so cool that that's happening for you. See, see, really. And my mom every day is asking me, so who did you meet? Like, for example, the other night I was at the restaurant and, uh, and, uh, so I was with a couple of friends and, uh, and there was like Michelle Pfeiffer, Michelle Pfeiffer at the table next to mine, a lot of girls. To me, Nisha Pfeiffer, she is a real goddess. Like, oh, yes. Yes. Allora, her in scat face, I have, I have her inside my unconscious. Like, her entering in the... I mean, so I... T and she was there and, and she was so nice with me. And she said, me and my friends, we loved you so much in the show. You are crazy for you. I said, come on. Is this a joke to me? Like, I'm, I'm talking really to a goddess and she's telling me that she she appreciated my work. Good so gracious. I, that is incredible. Okay, so then I have to ask you that point because you, you're meeting all these incredible people, these legends, I mean, my God, Michelle Pfeiffer, Elton John, like literal legends in Hollywood. And you yeah. mentioned that it is a lot. It can be overwhelming and you see why people become, you know, reliant on substances. So I'm curious for you with the success of the White Lotus, because people love you, Sabrina. I mean, like when you were with us for the Power Women Summit, I know because I saw people like trying to swarm you. And I know that that's how that goes. So with the White Lotus taking off and with your character taking off, how have you been able to look out for yourself and make sure that you're staying present and like staying grounded, looking out for your mental health? How have you been able to take care of yourself? Allora, and to be honest, uh, in Italy, I have a big career and I receive lots of love from people in the streets. Like mm. they jump on me, they hug me. Some people, they cry when, when they meet me. So, and the, actually this happened, that started when I was 18. So wow. it's like all my life I've been receiving so much love. Also, I was a comedian for many, many years. I was making people laugh. And when you make people laugh, you receive a lot of love. And, uh, but California to me was the realm of being free and wild because mm. no one knew me. <laughs> and so no, I used to live in Ohio for three years, uh, back and forth, Ohio, Rome. And uh, that was happiness. I thought, wow, no one knows me. No one recognizes me here. I can be no makeup, bad dress, wild like this. In, uh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I can be wildly free. And now, what the fuck? I cannot. <laughs> what? <laughs> that. Of course, I am so grateful because I'm receiving really so much love. Imagine like uh, a couple of months ago, I was, I went to a market, you know, those fantastic uh, hippie markets where there are, okay. So uh, for example, I was trying a jacket. I really loved it. It was a vintage jacket, big. I said, maybe it's too big. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure, but anyway, I love it. I put it back 
Then I left. And after five minutes, someone run after me. Hey, please, please, Sabrina, take this jacket, please. Please, I want to thank you for your work. Can you take this jacket? <laughs> and girls, it's happening everywhere. I go back home full of gifts, like it's Christmas time. <laughs> I have food, I have clothes, I have uh, uh, beauty products, I have um, stones. They literally give me things in the street, not like in a gift room. Oh, you're and- gonna need to open a new closet. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't imagine. In fact, now, I- when I go back to Italy, I need at least two more huge luggages because, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I got some stuff. And so, or for example, something that really made me reflect and made me really feel, made me feel so touched. Like I was in a cafe and the girl came to me and, uh, she was crying like she had literally tears in her eyes and she said i want to thank you because you became an icon and you became an icon with this nose and you make me feel good about myself because you showed up you showed that you can become a powerful woman even if you are not perfect if you have things that you you didn't take a surgery. So to me, that was really, really meaningful because I really felt, I mean, girls, I've been crying for this nose for years, for like, you're eight- gorgeous. I would never even think anything like, no, 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 but no, no, I, I, no, thank you so much. Thank you. But this is like, this is not a regular nose. No, usually people have a, a more regular nose especially actresses, they have maybe more regular faces. And so remembering me struggling for the nose and then taking an appointment with the surgery. And then at the end, I didn't show up because I felt actually I woke up in the middle of the night screaming because I had the nightmare that after the plastic surgery, I didn't know anymore who I was. So I scrammed writing. <laughs> Yeah, I would have canceled too. That's that's a big like, nope, no thanks, don't need it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so I need to do it. And now there is a girl and other people that write to me about this and about uh, the fact that they feel represented by me. And this is incredibly precious. One of the other groups that I know felt very represented by you is the LGBTQ community. And I know you've mentioned in the past how uh, in Italy to be gay, is still a big issue. They don't have many rights. They can't get married. They can't have kids. They're often victims of hate crimes. So what did it mean for you to take on this character? And what feedback have you received from the Italian community? Uh, Mindy, thank you for this question because... uh... In this moment, too, the LGBT community in Italy is struggling so much, even more, because this government is even more strict and uh, has a vision that is very squared. And so they are really now, they really have to struggle and to fight in order to to, to feel respected and to, 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 to get the rights, the same rights. Mm-hmm. So... When I read the script, actually, to be honest, before reading the script, during the audition, during the audition, when I understood that Valentina was a queer, I thought, I, if I get this role, I have, I have a duty. And the duty is that everybody must understand her feelings. Everybody must understand that love is love for everyone. There is no genre, there is no color, there is nothing. Love is love. Love is love. And uh, in order, I I felt, uh, girls, you can think that maybe I am crazy, but me, as a nurse, I always felt a responsibility, uh, always, always, since... It's, it's years that I feel this responsibility. To me, it's very important. If I can somehow be less uh, 
I'm useful. I, I, I'll, do, I'll do everything I can. So I felt the responsibility. This character must be understood by everybody. So I made a proposal to Mike White because Valentina was not supposed to be so emotional. I did this proposal during the live, the live audition with him. And so I made this scene uh, when Valentina, she's with Isabella. And uh, I will never forget that Mike had tears. And he told me, oh, Sabrina, I didn't expect Valentina to be so sweet. And, um, and she said, I would like to, to explore this direction with you. And I thought in that moment that it was just a nice goodbye. You know, when, when, a, when a director is not going to choose you, he tells you something flattering so you can live with a <laughs> smile. So you leave feeling good about yourself. Exactly. exactly. So I thought, oh, that was so nice. That was so sweet. Oh, my God. I'm not going to see him anymore in my life, you know. <laughs> And then, and then after two weeks, I got the call. I mean, it's impossible to remember that moment. But when I played Valentina, he made me, he allowed me to go in that direction, in that emotional, emotional side, tender, sweet, vulnerable, innocent, pure. And that made this character so loved. I receive, I still receive on Instagram messages from all over the world and they thank me and, uh, and they, they said that now I am a queer icon. It's very weird because I've, I've always been a queer icon in Italy. I don't know why. <laughs> Since I was 18, they decided that I was a queer icon. I didn't know why. I said, why? I don't know. I still, I'm still wondering why, <laughs> but they called me for every like, uh, 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 you know, gay pride, I was the godmother, gay pride, for every manifestation, queer festival, I was always called and I loved that. Yeah, we need to get you on RuPaul's Drag Race. You need to be yeah, a guest judge. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that would be fantastic. And, We're manifesting uh, I, it. <laughs> sorry? sorry? We're manifesting it. Yes, we are. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> and so now it's happening everywhere. It's happening here happening in the world and I feel so so proud and Good. you should and it, she was really Valentina was just an excellent character watching her story progress was incredible so we have to while we're manifesting things let's we have to dream together here because the thing with the white lotus right is yes. there's a carryover Jennifer Coolidge was the carryover from season one to season two but now spoilers for anyone if you haven't seen it at this point i'm sorry but like it's out so like jennifer coolidge is you know gone and or at least her character is rather what is so so if if it is valentine we don't know if valentine is going to be in season three unless you do know do you know that it do, do nah. you know? <laughs> yeah, i thought i was gonna be slick. ever fall in this trap do you think so <laughs> listen i gotta I just, try I, yeah. I, I had to try. I was trying to be smooth, but let's say, it, let's say hypothetically, let's say uh, if, if if things work out for Valentina, and she were to be in the next season of The White Lotus, if you could have just like your wish list as Sabrina, what would you want to see her story continue as? Like, what would you like to see happen next for Valentina if it were up to you? Allora, to be honest, I want to be honest. I don't think I'm going to be in the third season. I absolutely won't think so. So I don't want to think about Valentina because mm. I already miss Valentina so much. Really, I miss her like she was, I don't know, a sister. I really miss her. And uh, I kept thinking, thinking about her. What could I get to her now? Because I see her struggling. I see her, I see her struggling because, of course, now uh, a new life started for her because she was able to finally uh, look at herself in a more honest way and she had this, this epiphanic experience and uh, so of course this is a new part that is a new it's a new door but I can feel that she really still struggles because it's the beginning of another journey. And of course, and we, we all struggle. Come on. We always, 
always struggle. But at least, at least now she can, she can start a, a, a more real life. No, not lying to herself. And um, I just can make this wish in the universe that I'm going to work. Work, it's like it's not the right word. I hope that I can play as a child and uh, and create and and mix my life with Mike White again because he was one of my favorite companion of games in my entire life. See, here's the thing, though. You said you don't think you're going to be in there. So that doesn't that doesn't mean you've gotten a hard no yet. You haven't gotten the no, it's not going to happen. So I'm no. I'm going to choose to be hopeful. I know you miss Valentina. <laughs> not, I don't I want to make you suffer. But, like, I will be hopeful for you. We miss her, too. <laughs> That's very, very sweet. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. Well, one last question before I know we have to wrap. Um, so much of our audience are young women looking to break into the industry, are looking to become actresses. What advice do you have to, for these women? Allora, first of all, look for your unicity. You have to become unique. You have to be able to offer something that no one else can offer because that's the only way you can uh, be sure that if you have something unique and you work on it, work, 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 work means you study, you explore, you research. Acting is a research. You can never stop. When you stop to research, you are dead. So my suggestion, because this is what happened to my life, I didn't need, and I don't want to say that you need that, but for example, I had colleagues that uh, used, used the other uh, ways to become successful, no? Shortcuts. Um, so I am, I am, I'm really, I'm really proud today to say that uh, I am an actress now, an Italian actress in Hollywood without having sex, not even once, not even once. You go, girl. You're Pardon. killing it. <laughs> not even once. Not once. <laughs> not once. And I swear they tried, but no. <laughs> And so, oh my God, this I is why we, I was laughing so much there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Actually, I only had sex with this crazy guy that I was falling in love with, like poor guys, desperate people, like almost homeless. But oh my God, I was wildly free to have sex and to love who I choose to love and who I choose to have sex with. And I don't use that as the as uh, a tool. Mm. Your tool, girl, is your talent. Your tool is how much you study. Your tool is how much you want it. Your tool is how much you believe in it. Your tool is how much you want to give about yourself. Because acting is giving. Giving. You just have to think, how can I give more amen i want a t-shirt that says your tool is your talent like i'm about to put that i have like push. a i have like a board that sits in front of my face every day when i work i'm about to put that on my board your tool what? is your talent sabrina and Patrick, oh my god let's let listen we're gonna make no posters we're gonna for, yes <laughs> there is no stronger place for us to end this interview than right there sabrina Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us, for talking to us today. We do so appreciate your time and we appreciate your work and we are excited to see what you do next in Hollywood and just keep crushing it, Sabrina. We we love you so much. Thank you. Oh my God, Andy, thank you so much. My God, you, you love me. Emily, thank you girls. Thank you for having me here. 
It was fantastic. And uh, I want to give all my love to you girls and to all the women that uh, struggle in this world and all the other human beings, all the queer, everybody. So much love to all of you. Ciao. I hope we see Bye. you soon. Thank Bye. you. I don't think that will ever leave me. Your tool is your talent. Like, that's just, that's some deep, uh, I'm, I was going to swear, that is some deep stuff. That was, that was some insightful, that, that was an insightful moment. Very insightful. I know, I feel like I need to get a tattoo on that. Because we, we also talked to uh, Beatrice uh, from White Lotus, um, who starred in the show with, with Sabrina, and she was talking about considering getting a tattoo. So she maybe she'll do the butterfly yes. that she wanted. We'll get this. We need, to check in. we need to check in with her and see if that tattoo happened. And if it didn't, we need to make it so we can all get we need to go to Italy and then all get matching tattoos together. That seems like easy, a decision easy. making. Yeah, perfect. Let's do it. <laughs> easy peasy, great. Catch you at the airport here in a little bit. Um, guys, for real though, thank you so much for listening, for watching because you are able to do that now. We appreciate you so, so much. Emily, tell them what we got coming. Although don't tell them like everything we have coming because you know, mystery. Yeah, we do have a lot of uh, exciting episodes coming up with the women behind your favorite television shows. It's going to be a lot of fun. We also, you know, do announce them ahead of time on uh, our Rap Women newsletter, which you can sign up for at rapwomen.com, uh, the Rap Women Instagram, which is at Rap Women, and on the Rap Women's Twitter, which is at the Rap Women. Uh, so you should be sure to stay tuned for all of our exciting things coming up. We love you. We can't wait to hear from you. And let us know what you think about that mac and cheese and applesauce don't don't do it i don't trust it don't do it <laughs> thanks everyone see you next time Bye, guys.